Hey, what's up, users? This is John at Muse for You here to help you build awesome websites without code. And this is going to be a quick video tutorial on the new update to the animator widget. Um, it is now the animator widget 2.0. Um, and down here, I have the new updates to the widget. Um, there's a new widget setup. The animations take up less code in the back end. Fixed issue with animations not animating across breakpoints. There's a new on scroll setup. There's the ability to add indicators for on scroll. This allows you to see where the element will animate within the browser. There's new fade in and fade out options. The onload, onload animations do not appear before the animation starts. Um, and there's abbreviated widget names for easier access when searching in the library panel. And there's instructions, instructions included within the widget for easy, re easy reference on how to use the widget. Uh, so to access this widget, you simply go to museforyoushop.com and here you can click on the pop-up and here you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year or if you'd like to use PayPal you can click here and subscribe with PayPal uh, the only widget that's not included in the subscription is the Muse Morph SVG morphing widget uh, because it's using Green Socks Morph SVG plugin technology um, so it is a standalone widget um, and down here uh, right here we have the animator widget uh, so we can click here and if you'd like to purchase individually you can click add to cart to purchase individually or again you can get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year and here is the widget description and these are previous videos Videos that show somewhat how to use the widget but in this widget I'll show you how to use the new update um, and then the preview page here and you can check out a few of the animations here all right looks good so I'll quickly show how to use the new widget and the new widget setup uh, so I'll go here into Adobe Muse and the first thing I'm going to type in into the library panel um, if you don't see the library panel you can go to window and click on library to bring up the library panel um, and here I'll just type in a and M and the new abbreviation uh, so you can quickly find it in the library panel is a n m t r so animator I just abbreviated it so uh, it's easier to find in the library panel um, so here we have the animator at first and we have the animator at first with on scroll um, if you're adding any on scroll animations you'll want to add, use the at first with on scroll yeah the animator at first with on scroll um, and that will take care of all the animations so you can have both on scroll and on load on click and on hover animations um, if you don't have any on scroll animations you can just add the add first widget here um, and that will work for the on hover on click on and on load animations um, so you don't need both of these just if you have the on scroll animations you'll just want to add uh, with the with on scroll add first widget um, so I'm gonna add some on scroll animations. so I'll click here click hold and drag and place at the top of my Adobe Muse website and uh, before I add on scroll, I'll just show some of the new widget options in the on load, on hover, and on click options. Um, so if I click on, or if I click hold and drag and place the on load widget here, um, everything looks uh, pretty pretty similar. Um, we just have this new fade in option, and I removed the the on scroll fading options as well in the on scroll widget. Uh, but we, here we have this nice fading option uh, or fade in option. Um, and if you worked with the previous animator, you'll notice or you might have noticed that uh, when the animation first uh, loaded, you, you'd see the animation for like a quick second, and then it would animate. And that wasn't very nice because um, it was kind of glitchy, didn't look great. Uh, with this new fade in option, that has been taken care of. So if I create a square and I fill it with green here and or any color, and then I'll click on the rectangle, I'll go to graphic styles and I'll type in animate one to assign the graphic style to this element. Um, and then let's say I pick in, I pick uh, one of these uh, animations. So I'll do fade in, let's do fade in up just like this and I'll go to file preview page and browser we now have this nice slick animation um, and we do not see the animation before it starts now the reason this works and I've actually included it here in the uh, widget here so you, you can kind of take a look and, and read it here but um, I've set the initial opacity to zero so you do not see the element uh, before uh, the the element animates and then in the fade in option, I've enabled the fade in and I've set the fade in duration to zero. So um, it comes in immediately, but you do not see the element before it animates. If I were to set this to, let's say, 100 milliseconds, or actually let's set it to 500 milliseconds, and I go to file, preview page, and browser, we now have a fade in with the animation. Um, and because it's already fading in, um, we don't really see it. So I'll pick another animation, let's say wobble 
and I'll go to file preview page and browser so we see it fades in a little bit and then it wobbles um, I'll set it to a thousand so we can see it a little bit better and I'll go to file preview page and browser and we see it fades in and it wobbles um, and just as an example of what it was doing before if I uncheck enable fade in and I set the initial opacity to one um, and I do like a fade in animation or fade in up and I go to file preview page and browser we saw we saw the anim the element uh, like for a split second before we saw it animate um, and that's all changed now you just set the initial opacity to zero and set the enable fade in and then you can set the enable fade into the enable fade in duration to zero so you don't see the the element um, the element before it animates so I'll go to file preview page and browser and we see we have a nice animation and we don't see the element before it animates all right, so those are the uh, the updates there, and this is across uh, for the on click and the on hover. For the on click, the new update for that is that you don't have to click twice for the on click to repeat. Um, the animation finishes, and then you click again, and then the animation will play. And I've outlined a few of the things I just mentioned in the widget here, so you can take a look as you're working with it. And I've also added the animate.css reference and the magic.css reference. So if you click on it, you can check out all the animations here. Um, and then decide which animation you'd like to use. Um, and then as well for magic.css, uh, click here, and then you can uh, check out the different animations uh, just by clicking here, and then you can decide which animation you'd like to use. Okay, so that that's the update there. Uh, so now I'll go to the on scroll update. I'm not gonna go over the on click and on, on hover because they're similar to the on load, uh, but they just animate on click or on hover. Uh, so now for the really fun part is the on scroll uh, animations. So I'm going to type in animator again, and I'm going to bring in the animator on scroll. So I'll click hold and drag and place onto my Adobe Muse website. And because I've already added the animator at first with on scroll, uh, these animations will work really great here. Um, so again, I'll just create another rect uh, square, and I'll, I'll just assign the animate one here to it, the graphic style. And if you didn't see what I just did, I just since we already created the animate one graphic style and it had attributes applied to it, I just applied it to this rectangle and I actually didn't need to delete the first uh, rectangle that I created. Um, so I'll just drag this down here and place it right here. And here we have the options. So for the on scroll, we have the on scroll offset from top and it's from zero to one. Zero is the top of the browser and one is the bottom of the browser. And then we have on scroll duration and this is in pixels and I'll show that in a second. And then again, we have initial opacity and we have repeat animation and add indicators. Um, so I'll go ahead and preview this in the browser. So I'll go to file, preview page and browser and I'll scroll down and we can see once the element reaches the middle of the browser, it animates. Um, I'll select another animation so we can see it um, a little bit better. So I'll go to file, preview page and browser. I'll scroll down and once it reaches the middle of the browser, it animates. So now the really great part about this new update is that we can add indicators. Uh, so if I check this option here, add indicators, um, and I go to file, preview page, and browser, we now have these indicators here uh, within the browser. So if I scroll, once the element reaches this trigger, it will animate. So here we have the element, and the start is at the top of the element, so we see the start, uh, the start indicator here, and we see the end indicator here. So I'll scroll, and it wobbles when it reaches the trigger. All right, and then it will stop. It would stop once it reaches the end trigger here or the end indicator here. Um, and I can have the animation repeat on scroll, so I can um, every time it reaches the trigger, it will animate. So then I'll scroll, and it reaches the trigger. It's it animates, and then it uh, stops when it reaches the end indicator here. So if I go really fast, we can see that it stops once it goes out of the start and end indicators there. So it's literally animating within these and uh, within uh, this this duration here. And this is 300 pixels in duration. If I wanted that section to be a bit bigger, I would just set the duration to higher. So I could set it to 500 pixels. I go to file preview page and browser. So now we see the start and end indicators are f further apart and the element will, th will animate in between these indicators and it will trigger at this trigger point here. All right, and I could set it to less. So if I said, you know, like 100, and I'll go to file, preview page, and browser, and I scroll down, we see we only have this window for the element to animate. So if I scroll really fast past it, we see that the element the element stops animating. 
All right, and uh, that looks good there. And if I wanted to change the trigger point, um, let's say I wanted it, wanted it to be lower in the browser, I could set it to 0.8, and I'll go to File, Preview Page, and Browser, and we see the trigger is lower in the browser. And if I set it to something like uh, point, point 0.2, it'll be higher in the browser, just like that. So here it's higher, and if I set it to zero, it'll be at the top of the browser like that right there there's the trigger and if I set it to one the trigger will be at the bottom of the browser just like that so here the trigger is at the bottom all right and I'll set it back to we'll say 0.6 just to do something a little bit different file preview page and browser I'll scroll the element triggers there at the trigger and we have this window of animation here uh, for it to animate there or for it to start and stop animating um, and I'll change the duration of the, the on-scroll duration. Um, and then we can have the element fade in and fade out as it scrolls. Um, if we do want it to fade in, we'll just enable the fade in here. And then for the initial opacity, I'll set it to zero. And now if I go to file, preview page, and browser, I'll scroll down. As it reaches the trigger point, it fades in and then it comes in. Looks great. And then if I want it to fade out as well, I'll just go into the fade out, enable fade out, uh, enable on scroll fade out and um, we want the initial opacity to be to zero so it'll fade out to zero um, the opacity of zero and the duration is a thousand milliseconds um, one second equals a thousand milliseconds so it'll fade out the fade out duration will be one second so I'll go to file preview page and browser and I'll scroll down here we see it fades in and then after the end trigger it fades out all right it comes back in fades in and then it fades out so once it leaves these indicators uh, it fades out but within the indicator, it fades in. Looks great. So if you just have it fade in, um, it won't repeat the fade in, but because it's fading out, it's repeating the fading in as well because it fades out and fades in. So here we go, fades in and then fades out. All right, so this can make for really slick animations on your Adobe Muse website. And one of the great updates is that it now works across all breakpoints. So I'll add breakpoints. I'll just add multiple breakpoints, just like that. And just like that. And I'll go to File, Preview Page, and Browser. And as I make the browser smaller, and I'll scroll down, we can see the element animate there and fades out. Perfect. All right, looks good. So that is a fix. It now works across all breakpoints. Um, and you actually only need to have these uh, widgets in the largest breakpoint. You can have them in all breakpoints, but if you did want to hide them on the smaller breakpoints, you could do that. Um, you just have to change the graphic style name on the breakpoints that you uh, wouldn't or on the breakpoints that you don't want the animation on or you could create new elements and ha and hide the animation elements on that particular breakpoint. Um, if you have any questions about that, let me know and I'd be happy to explain. Uh, you can leave the questions in the comment section. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it for uh, for the new update. Okay, and if you did want to enable or disable fade in or fade out, you just uncheck these here or check and uncheck. Um, and if you do want it to fade in, you set the initial opacity to zero and then the fade in to is one. So it'll fade in from, from an initial opacity to zero um, to an opacity of one. Um, so that's it for all the updates. I did leave uh, quite a bit of uh, descriptions in the widget itself. So you can read the the references here as you're working with the widget if you have any questions or um, if you need something cleared up. So this goes over a lot of the updates that I've just went over, a lot of the information I've just went over in this video tutorial. Okay, so those are the updates to the animator widget 2.0. Uh, again, to access this widget, you simply go to, let me make this bigger here, bigger here, you go to museforyoushop.com. And here you can click on the pop-up and here you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. Or if you'd like to subscribe with PayPal, you can click here and subscribe with PayPal. The only widget that's not included in the subscription is the Muse Morph SVG Morphing widget uh, because it is using GreenSock's Morph SVG plugin technology. Uh, so it is, it is a standalone widget. Um, if you'd like to access the animator widget, you can click here. And here you can click add to cart to purchase individually. Or again, you can get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. Um, I will be sending an update email to those who have purchased the widget individually. Um, and if you'd like the update, just send me an email 
um, and I'll resend the link or you can uh, go go to the link that you initially received um, and download it from there. But if you do, don't have that link or, anymore or you can't find it in your email, just let me know and I'll resend the link. Um, so that's it for this video tutorial. Again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. Uh, if you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also in the show more section below are links to other resources and links to museforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you.